Hey everyone, Nick here and welcome back to GamerTube, and welcome back to our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. So in today's video we're going to be looking at the last character at the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland Pizzeria. And this last character is Eddie the Eel. So we'll be going into Eddie's location, their gameplay mechanics, their backstory and all that good stuff as well. And as always, like in every video, I will just state that all the characters and locations in these videos are fan made. So this is not really tied to the overall FNAF universe or the lore. This is pretty much just a fun what if scenario and a cool creepy story we get to tell and we hope you enjoy. And lastly, before we start today's video, do be sure to subscribe to GamerTube as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. It also keeps you up to date with all the videos that we post. Also in the near future, do keep an eye out for our FNAF community live stream, where we're going to get the community all together and make our very own FNAF character, so stay tuned for that. Alrighty, well let's take a look at Water Wonderland's final character with Eddie the Eel. So before we get into our final character at the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland, let's first recap on the characters we've seen so far. So for the first character we were introduced to, we had Sam the Shark an animatronic modelled after the Great White Shark. Sam was the keyboard player for the Under the Sea Band. After an unfortunate accident involving two younger guests ripping off Sam's fins, they were then put out of commission until they could be repaired. When the IT guy showed up, curiosity got the best of them and they managed to fool around with Sam's mysterious programming. They accidentally triggered Sam's rogue AI, and ever since then they've been hell-bent on attacking the security guard. For the next character we have Sid the Squid. One of the more unique looking Freddy Fazbear animatronics, Sid proved to be quite the interesting character. So Sid's role up on stage was that of the xylophone player. But performing up on stage wasn't their only job. They were also the mascot for the Water Wonderland Sushi Bar. This was a miniature sushi restaurant that was aimed at the adult audience and offered more food and beverage options for parents who didn't feel like eating greasy pizza and sugary soda. Whilst posing as the mascot, Sid observed the sushi chefs with their razor sharp knives. They wanted to be just like them. They wanted to trade in their soft plastic knives for the real thing. Eventually they got their hands on the real thing and couldn't wait to show off the deadly sharp knives to the security guard. But unfortunately for the poor security guard, if Sid showed off these knives, they wouldn't be very careful. Now we come to Lucy the Anglerfish. Lucy was designed after the mysterious anglerfish from the deep. She didn't actually perform in the Under the Sea band. Instead, she was a part of an educational program that taught kids about the scary yet friendly creatures of the deep sea. Lucy was purposely designed to look frightening to teach kids that although some things may look scary, they are also friendly. The miniature aquarium housed a number of strange looking creatures including their very own anglerfish. Lucy was quite fond of her little friend and could even communicate with it. But after an unfortunate small scale earthquake, all the tanks cracked and flooded the deep sea aquarium with Lucy inside. Lucy was left inside the aquarium for days, whilst the workers decided how to get them out and save the fish as well. Eventually they drained the water and bagged up all the fish. Except for one tiny anglerfish that they missed. Lucy stood there as she watched her little friend slowly run out of air. After watching this, Lucy was never the same. The workers couldn't remove Lucy from the aquarium either. After pushing and heaving with no results, they decided to leave her in there and lock her up. From time to time, the security guard was asked to go inside and check in on her. One time, the guard found a little shriveled up anglerfish laying on the ground. They picked it up and decided to flush the poor dead creature down the toilet. After seeing the guard do this, Lucy had it out for them ever since. They needed to make them pay for what they did to their little friend. 
And lastly, we come to the fourth character at the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland. And this character was Barry the Turtle. Barry was quite the unnerving looking animatronic. They were modelled after the sea turtles, but the engineers were not very successful in making them look like a friendly character. Barry's role up on stage was that of the bongo player. On some occasions, Barry's creepy face would often cause some of the children to be frightened. So the staff would have to put an old Freddy mask on their face to make them look less creepy. They were due for a visual upgrade eventually, but they had to make do with this appearance until then. Throughout the day, people would always stuff their garbage in Barry's shell. This caused their inner workings to gum up and their plastic outer shell to crack. The establishment ordered Barry a new shell and had them fitted with it in a few days. Barry liked their new shell, but they thought their old one was being put to waste. Someone else should be wearing such a nice shell. So Barry set out to find the perfect person to cram into their old shell. But unfortunately for them, they couldn't find anyone who matched their specific shell requirements. That was until they came across the security guard. They were the perfect size and shape to fit their old shell. So throughout the night, the player needed to fend off these crazed animatronics. Until it was 6am, then only would they be safe. So now this brings us to the final character at the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland. And this final character is Eddie the Eel. Eddie was modelled after the Moray Eel. Despite how intimidating the Moray Eel may look, the engineers designed Eddie to have more of a friendly and goofy looking appearance. Moray Eels are famous for their sharp and deadly teeth. But considering Eddie was going up on stage and not hidden away like Lucy, they opted for the classic rounded teeth like the classic characters from the past. For their colour scheme they went with a dark seaweed green. They were one of the rare animatronics at Fazbear Entertainment to have a tail. Also on their neck and head they were sporting the famous mohawk like fin that most moray eel species would have. Now Eddie's role up on stage was that of the accordion player. They would be up on stage playing their happy tunes with the rest of the band. Eddie was considered to be quite the popular character amongst all the guests. Here and there they would have their very own accordion solo whilst up on stage. When it was one of the guests birthdays they would also walk over and play for them and their party at the table side. So all in all, Eddie was considered to be another happy and friendly character at the Water Wonderland Pizzeria. That was until Eddie's tragic accident. So on one unfortunate day, like all the other characters before him, Eddie suffered a major malfunction. This malfunction proved to be quite dangerous for one poor individual. So, as we all know, the manager at the Water Wonderland Pizzeria cared more about saving money and less about the safety of the staff and guests. This has been evident from the discounted hardware and software that was purchased from a mysterious foreign country. Also the cheap glass that was purchased for the aquarium that cracked and shattered with a very low level earthquake. And the cheap plastic shell that was purchased for Barry that managed to get damaged and cracked. So when it came to sourcing parts for Eddie the Eel, the manager travelled far and wide to multiple different Fazbear locations to grab whatever free spare parts they could get. Their endoskeleton arms and legs were sourced from three different decommissioned characters. But it was their head that was the most concerning. The manager sourced their head from quite an old establishment. The mechanism in their jaw was something called a spring lock mechanism. The engineers and repair workers never heard of such a mechanism. It must have been some truly dated tech. Regardless the manager instructed them to get to work and build Eddie.
The spring lock jaw was truly a terrifying thing to work with. Any sign of moisture around the mechanism and it would clamp shut immediately. The repair workers dreaded doing any maintenance and repairs on Eddie. Especially when they need to reach inside of their mouth. They'd never know when their jaw would clamp shut, taking their hand with them. One drop of sweat and it would be all over. So one night after a busy weekend at the pizzeria, one of the repair workers had to work on Eddie. Unfortunately, they pulled the short straw and had to work on this troublesome animatronic. As they sat down in front of Eddie, they started by first removing both of their eyes. They placed them both in the cleaning receptacle and then attempted to remove their faceplate. After releasing both latches on either side of their jaw, they then had to release the final latch. Unfortunately for the repair worker, this final latch was located in the back of their mouth. As long as they were careful, they wouldn't come to any harm. They just had to be careful not to sweat or add any moisture around the mechanism. They've done this nerve-wracking task quite a few times, but every time they did it, it always feels like the very first frightening time. The repair worker had to be careful of many sharp components in Eddie's mouth as well. But before they knew it, they've nicked their finger on a sharp edge right at the back of Eddie's mouth. Before they realised and pulled their hand out of this terrifying spring lock, a few drops of blood had dripped onto the mechanism. All of a sudden, Eddie's jaw clamped down in an instant with a disturbing snap and crunch sound. The repair worker desperately tried to escape as their hand was trapped inside this locked up mess of metal. They tried desperately to free themselves via kicking, scratching, ripping and tearing their way free. But no matter how much they struggled, they couldn't free themselves. Whilst trapped, the poor worker wasn't able to access any of the phones to call for help. By the morning, the employees found the poor repair worker still trapped inside Eddie's mouth. Eddie himself looked pretty worse for wear as well. The repair worker, while struggling, managed to damage Eddie's body quite a bit. The establishment had to call an ambulance and a doctor on site to free this poor worker. Unfortunately, Eddie's jaw was clamped so tight that they needed to do an emergency amputation. The worker was immediately transported to a hospital and was in a stable condition. Although, it was a different story for Eddie altogether. The worker's severed hand was still trapped inside their locked jaw. None of the employees could open their jaws. So they opted to close the restaurant for the day and store Eddie in the repair room overnight until they could get enough repair worker to saw and grind their way through and remove their jaw. This deeply distressed Eddie. They couldn't stand having the severed hand inside of their mouth. They didn't even mean to clamp down. Eddie was powered off and before they knew it, something truly awful had happened. They also weren't too happy about their face having to be busted open to release the hand the next day. They needed someone to help them remove it straight away. And the only one who was at the pizzeria was that security guard. Whether they wanted to or not, Eddie was going to force them to remove this horrific hand. So now let's get into the gameplay segment of this video. In the previous videos we were introduced to the Water Wonderland security office. The difference with this office was the large roller door at the end of the room. It could be controlled, but it would take longer to close. And whilst it was in use, it would render the other two side doors inactive. So the player needs to keep an eye on the monitors to track Eddie's movements. They typically would always start out in the repair room. But they would gradually make their way towards the security office. From time to time, they can be seen staring at the camera, almost like they know the player is watching them. When they would make their way towards the main roller door, the player would need to shut it immediately. Eddie would also be able to appear on either side. Eddie would wait for a longer period of time behind each of the metal doors. 
Once again, the player would need to listen out and be sure they weren't there anymore. As the night goes on, Eddie would be more and more persistent and try to enter the room. The player needs to keep juggling all of their attempts to enter the office. If they can't keep up with Eddie's movements and let him slip inside the office, then they'd be greeted with a classic FNAF jump scare. So that was all the characters for the Freddy Fazbear Water Wonderland Pizzeria. I've definitely had a blast making these characters, and we here at Gamerdupe hope you all enjoyed the third chapter in our Five Nights at Freddy's character concept series. Alrighty everyone, well that's all we have for today's video, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you enjoyed the overall chapter of the Water Wonderland. If you did enjoy them, please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe as it helps out a lot and it is greatly appreciated. Also, do let me know in the comment section down below what you thought of Ed of the Eel and what you'd like to see going forward. Alrighty everyone, well to the next video, I'll catch you later, bye.